Yo, what is going on, y'all? So, in today's video, we're gonna be doing a how to swap out your radiator in case your radiator is cracked, damaged, clogged, exploded. It just doesn't work anymore for whatever reason it is. Mine actually exploded, coolant splashed everywhere, and it kind of started smoking all over the place. And it turns out I have a crack on mine. So we got a brand new radiator. Uh, just a simple OEM replacement radiator because I do want to keep it kind of OEM inside the engine bay. I don't really have much done to it, stock airbox. The only thing I have is an exhaust, but we are going to change out the radiator. I got a replacement one over there. So I'm here to show you guys how to swap that out. So you guys see, coolant splashed everywhere. The crack, that's right here. You really see that? You see that? The very first thing you're gonna wanna do is drain all of the coolant. So I already got a lot of coolant on my engine bay, but there's still coolant inside the radiator. So there's a drain plug for this thing. I'm gonna show you guys where it is. You're gonna lift up the car. All right, so you're gonna wanna go ahead and get a container. This one has a little bit of oil mixing in it with coolant. So it doesn't look the best, but you'll still get the job done as long as it catches the coolant that you drain out. Underneath the car, right here, where the transmission is at, underneath here in the radiator, there's a drain plug, which is this one right here. So you just wanna open this one out and let all the fluid drain out. Also forgot to mention, if you guys have gloves, probably wanna use some gloves because the smell of coolant will stay in your skin for a while so you don't really want that i forgot to put on gloves learn from my mistakes so uh, coolant still hasn't finished draining if you want to speed up the process squeeze the upper hose a little bit get that air out your guys is if it's stock it probably look uh thinner and smaller usually goes right here the coolant reservoir tank but I kind of rerouted mine to be over there, so my hose from here. But just take this out, take out the uh, cap to kind of relieve some pressure. Your guys, this would look similar to this. This radiator, it's an aftermarket one, but it's routed to here. The hose, and this is the coolant reservoir. All right, this hose should come right off. I just want to take that off to the side. So now, radiator has been flushed. The cap came off to kind of relieve some pressure as well as, well as this hose that was connected right here to relieve more pressure like i say you can push the upper radiator hose kind of get all that stuff out from the top all right it looks like most of the coolant is pretty much out of there all right so this is the replacement one the oem replacement one it comes with those oil cooler lines for tra uh, automatic transmission this one is a manual transmission in case you guys have an auto so this one actually comes with the drain plug right there, like the one we took off. Right there. Comes a new one, so you can kind of discard of that. This one's brand new. All right, so next you guys are gonna do is take off this bracket holding these AC lines together. It's a 10, uh, two 10 millimeters right here. Just bend it in, like so, look. I took that away. I like to put the bolts back in where they were, just so you won't lose it. And then you want to take off these brackets. These hold on the actual radiator to the car itself. So there's one right here, 10 millimeter again. And there's another one right over here. All right, both of those brackets are out. One's right there ones right here so now what we're gonna do next is you want to unplug our electricals you want to unplug the fans there's a fan right here and a fan over there you want to unplug those before anything you see it down here you want to unplug that all right there this one's out boom and then there's these over here you want to take these out too all right so you guys want to go ahead and disconnect both these right here this one is held on see this little bracket right here you just want to slide this thing off and then unplug it all the time. Makes it easier. Okay, so after that, what you want to do is take off this bracket for the fan. It's holding on the fan on one side. 
Uh, we're gonna do this side first because this side you gotta take off the radiator hose and then take off the fan. But it's just these two bolts up here, two 10 millimeters, and then down there it's held on by like a bracket of some sort. It doesn't have any bolts, it just slides in. So these two right here, two tens. The fan on the driver's side. So now we're gonna go ahead and take off the two bolts holding this side fan, one right here, and one right here. It's two 10 millimeter bolts holding up the fan. All right, so we're gonna take off that hose clamp with some pliers. Get that out of the way. All right. And this thing might be pretty shut on there, to be honest. Just kind of want to twist it inwards. All right, now that the coolant hose is out, it might drain a little bit if you guys still had a little bit left in there, but if not, it shouldn't leak. So they're actually underneath the car. There is one more radiator fan bolt. There's one more fan bolt. It's right here. You guys can see that. That's the bolt. You gotta take that one off. Then it goes out. Forgot to take that one off. So the ratchet didn't really fit in there due to this liner here. But you can use a wrench to kind of take that out. Now the radiator fans just slide right out. All right, so now with all those bolts out, the radiator fan should, in theory, just slide right out. It's a little bit difficult to get out. You kind of want to slide it and turn it, spin it. Radiator fan, we're going to be using the same ones. You're still good. So I left this fan in here because uh, the last person that had this car put this bolt on and it kind of got stripped. So I couldn't take it out. So I'm gonna just take it out with the whole radiator itself. But we're gonna go ahead and this thing could almost literally just come out. The only thing holding it up left is that lower radiator hose down there. So you will take that one off the same way you took this one off. All right, so I went ahead and took off that hose from there. Took out this clamp and took off the hose. It did start leaking a little bit, but it should be fine. Also, I forgot to mention this. There is a plug down here. I forgot to take out as well. Just so you guys know, this plug right here. You wanna take this one off and then everything should come out. And that one just slides off of this bracket. See right there, it just, this whole thing was on there and I just kind of slid it out. Now the whole radiator is out. As I was taking off this radiator fan, I see exactly where the problem is. So if your guys looks like this, you guys are toast, you need a new one of these. Check this out, there's a little crack right here. I stick this blade in oh, here. See Look how easily it just folds in. Look at that. That is terrible. All right, y'all, now that the radiator and the fans are off and both the upper radiator and lower radiator hoses are off, you're ready to slide in your brand new radiator. Just be careful with this thing because you don't want to ruin all those linings on the inside because that's the thing that dissipates the heat and keeps your car cool. So try not to touch this part too much. If you bang it up here and there, a tiny little bit, you can get away with it, but not too much. Cause this, like I said, this dissipates the heat from the engine. Kind of cools it up. The radiator, the original one, will have these grommets on the bottom. Right here, exactly where this is. You just want to take those off, and you can use the same ones right on there. So kind of sit in the engine bay, and it won't be flopping around everywhere. All right, so I'm going to slowly... Gently kind of guide that into place. Get this hose out of the way. Gently, make sure you don't ruin the radiator. So that thing kind of sits in there like that. So it's not bolted on right now. It just kind of guided it into place. The groove that I was talking about, it's right underneath here right here kind of should just sit in there so it won't be rattling all over the place all right now what you're gonna want to do is put the brackets that you took off earlier these which will hold the radiator in place so it won't move again is these two tens right here one ten that we left on the car so we wouldn't lose it kind of hook that on there to grab the radiator so it won't fall forward millimeter 
All right, so now we can go ahead and plug in this lower radiator hose. Kind of put it on from here. Twist it in there. And then with the clamp, we can go ahead and clamp this down to here again. All right, I had to get it in from the top because that line that you see right here, this one, got in the way. So I had to do it from the top. It's kind of a weird angle, but you already know the deal. So now that that lower radiator hose is in, now you go ahead and slide the fan and move the upper radiator hose and kind of wiggle it in there. Again, not damaging the actual radiator because you don't want to ruin those little fins. Now you want to go ahead and put the bolts up here to kind of hold the fan in place. I always put it on my hand first, so then we go to tighten it to add that extra pressure. Put the other one right up here. Go ahead and make them a little tighter. Not too tight, these are pretty easy to break. So just so they're nice and snug. You can go ahead and plug in all your connections. So this one goes in there like so. Make sure you hear that click. And then these two get connected together and they go on this bracket. And that clip. And then this should just slide right in through this little bracket. Just slide in there and that should be good. It's plugged in. These two are plugged in. And now that you're on that part, you can go ahead and just uh, connect the upper radiator hose. Mine has a little cap that it came with. Just wanna put it right back where it came from. Make sure it's not folded. We put it in there and just push it inwards. Now that it's in there, you wanna get the clamp and do the exact same thing. Just put it, I like to trace where the last one left the mark cause that's how I know it was clamped on good. There you go. So you got the lower one installed, the lower radiator hose, the upper radiator hose, the fan is in there and the connections are all in there. And these two bolts are secured. And then there's one more 10 millimeter down there. If you guys remember from earlier, that yeah, you gotta put back on. All right, and I'm actually gonna be changing this hose out. I'm gonna be putting this black one on. So you wanna put this hose back into there like so and then again if you have the stock one you just run it into your cooling reservoir so now you're gonna want to go ahead and install the other driver side fan this little thing goes into a little square cube shaped grommet in there let me just show you guys real quick that little square shaped grommet right there this thing will go inside of there I don't want to shimmy it in there, moving this AC line out the way again, all while not damaging the actual radiator itself. All right, then you want to go ahead and put the bolts right up here to hold this radiator fan towards the radiator. Yeah, not too tight, just pretty snug so they won't break. Then you just want to go ahead and plug in the connections. Go ahead and plug in these connections right here. Snipped. Then again, you don't want to forget to put the one of these connections just dangling around on that bracket itself right there, or else it can move and get caught on that belt right there. And that's not going to be fun. Then we're going to go ahead and put this last bracket that's holding this AC line back onto that little hook right there. Now the connections are in and the radiator fans are held on. Both of them, all the hoses are plugged in. You're pretty much almost done. You just need the biggest step out of the coolant. All right, now for one of the final steps, you are gonna need this spill proof funnel kit. It makes your job a lot, a lot easier. If uh, you guys don't have one of these, I'll leave the link down below so you guys can pick one up on these at Amazon. I think they're like under 30 bucks and they do the job really, really good. Without this, you would probably struggle a lot without something similar to this because you do need to put the coolant in through here and you also bleed the system with one of these. You need one of these adapters to kind of go into your radiator. So it's one of these. This would just go onto here. Kind of hold the thing in place and this would act kind of as a cap. 
Just put it on there. And you twist it on just like a radiator cap. And now you can go ahead and put your funnel on top of there. Now we're gonna go ahead and pour Xerox. This is the brand that I use on all my cars, mostly Hondas, you know, because Honda, Hyundai, Nissan, and Subaru. You wanna basically fill up the radiator with coolant. I'm gonna pour that thing in there. Okay, while you're pouring, you wanna make sure that there's no leaks before you pour the whole thing out and you just throw your coolant on the ground, basically. Now that it's pretty much filled and there's no leaks on the ground, so you gotta worry about, you wanna fill up the remaining coolant about halfway mark, like so. And then you're gonna wanna turn on the vehicle to let the coolant in through the cycle and it run its courses. And then you want to turn the heat on full blast to get it flowing through the system to get it to work properly. So we're going to go ahead and turn on the engine and then turn on the heater to full blast. And then you should see the coolant start to bubble. You can see right there, which is a good thing. That's a normal thing. That's how you know all the bubbles and the air pockets are leaving the system because they're escaping through the air. You see right now it's bubbling up, which is a really good thing. Just let it do its course, let all the bubbles leave. If you want to speed up the process a little bit, you can push the upper radiator hose. You gotta get some air out. So, check that out. And then once the heater starts to get kind of hot, it's already getting a little bit hot. So it gets pretty hot. And it goes to normal operating temperature. You just literally just let it sit. Let it do its magic. Okay, so pretty much now that the air bubbles have left and your car is blowing out hot air and you're all good to go. Take out all that excess uh, coolant that's in there by using this plug that comes with the kit and put it all in the old coolant container. And just plug it in so it doesn't spill. A little bit will leak, but that's all right. Test will drain inside of there. And then. You wanna go ahead and take off that cap and put your radiator cap. Now you do wanna go ahead and wipe all of the excess coolant that's on there so you don't have it on there. <laughs> and that is how you replace your OEM replacement radiator for 1994 to 2001 Acura Integra LS, GS, and I believe the Type R too, if anything. Anyways, all that is it for this video. If you guys did enjoy this thing, make sure you go down below, you drop a comment. Subscribe, you like, do all that good stuff. We're about to hit a thousand subscribers. If you guys have not subscribed yet, go down below and subscribe. Peace.